Doctors across the country are closely monitoring a rise in respiratory illnesses. Ten states, plus New York City and Puerto Rico, are experiencing high or very high levels of rep respiratory illnesses. Now, that means a lot of people are going to the doctor with symptoms including fever, cough, and sore throat from any respiratory disease such as flu, COVID, RSV, and even the common cold. Yeah, and joining us now to talk much more about this is ABC's medical correspondent, Dr. Darian Sutton. Thanks so much for coming in, Doc. Thanks we for appreciate me. that. I feel like this winter in mm. particular, it's the first one where we're all indoors again. We're yes. not wearing masks. Yes. <laughs> and we're really kind of just passing germs all along. So it's yeah. it's almost not surprising that we're seeing such an uptick, right? It's to be expected. In the emergency room, we prepare for this. We start advancing our schedules, making sure we have more resources because we just simply expect that people are going to come in with these respiratory illnesses. But we have to be cognizant that now COVID is a factor in this. It's not just the flu. We're also thinking about RSV as well. And as you just stated, in the South, we're seeing incredibly high levels of respiratory illness. Mm -hmm. And that's often a predictor of what we will see in places like here in New York City. Any connection to what we were seeing in China? You know, we've been reporting them on uh, the high respiratory cases there. Yeah. Uh, is there a global risk that's coming out of that region of the world? From what we know now, I do not think that there is any reason to be concerned or a global risk, but it's more likely a factor of the fact that there's decreased restrictions in China that leads to more transmission, things like, again, mm -hmm. RSV, COVID, and right. even in children, a not so common respiratory illness called mycoplasma pneumonia, which again, these are all common respiratory infections that we see during the winter. We're likely just seeing a greater amount of it in China just mm -hmm. simply because of the restrictions and how they've dealt with COVID in the pandemic before. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about vaccination. Yes, yes. Really important to get vaccinated for COVID and the flu. There's a new study out that shows that if you get your kids vaccinated, they have a lesser chance of getting sick. By almost 50%. So in this study, they looked at over 450,000 people and they found that those who had decreased, or excuse me, those who participated in mm -hmm. vaccines had almost a 50% reduced risk of having a hospital ER visit, an urgent care visit, or getting hospitalized overall. As you both know, being in the emergency room in the wintertime is incredibly stressful. Yeah. So anything that can decrease that risk is really important. Is it too late to get a flu or even a COVID shot? It's not. It's not too late. The uh, flu season extends through March and even a little bit past that. The only thing you have to know is that when you get your flu vaccine, it takes about two weeks for it to become more effective. And mm -hmm. so now is actually a good time before we okay. start the other holiday festivities and, and get closer together. You can get the vaccines together. Too. You can get them together just like children get multiple vaccines mm -hmm. at the same time. We as adults can get the COVID and the flu vaccine at the same time. OK, and wash your hands and wash your hands. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Liz Cho. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got a lot of help. My dad She's a fantastic <laughs> colleague. Yeah. I'll just bring her back to the emergency Darian room. Sutton, thank you so much, Dr. <laughs> of course. Thank Appreciate you. you joining us.